20th century history was pretty much dominated by the world's attempts to come to terms with the phenomenon of communism, that totalitarian ideology that um, dominated the politics of Russia and China for a great uh, many years, and which looked at some points in our history as though it was going to dominate the world. People's reactions to it uh, ranged from um, attempts at accommodating it, uh, detente, mutual coexistence, to out-and-out hysteria and paranoia. Only in hindsight uh, can I think people see that it never really was a serious threat, or at least a serious internal threat, um, to the West. Um, it never really got even remotely close to um, taking over any large Western country, let alone the United States. There was, it's laughable now in hindsight to think that people once believed that that was likely to happen. But it looked dangerous. People didn't like the fact that they had these elaborate show trials, that people were denounced in public, that people were called all kinds of unanswerable names like enemy of the people, um, like a counter-revolutionary, uh, all kinds of bizarre denunciations, and then either shot or sent off to the gulag. I think that it was that um, the, the great care, the great effort that the communist regimes put into uh, putting people through some sort of weird kangaroo court to make them look guilty uh, with these charges of counter-revolution or, uh, or just political heresy of some sort or another that frightened people the most. Um, because the regime said, look, we do have enemies. We have to deal with these people, and uh, if we don't, then, well, they, they will subvert our state. Now, of course, uh, many Western countries then developed their own version of that sort of thing, of denouncing people. Um, the most famous example, of course, at least in American history, is the phenomenon of McCarthyism, where people were called names like subversives, like um, un-Americans, this sort of thing. And uh, they had their lives ruined often, um, although huh, they're... There was nothing compared to the uh, vast apparatus of repression and execution, murder, that existed in the Soviet Union at the time. But it did look as though uh, McCarthy and the people who backed him were on the point of creating a watered-down version of the uh, vast denunciatory apparatus then existing in the Soviet Union. Now, it's interesting how denunciation... Uh, gets used these days. Um, anyone who's been on YouTube long enough knows that you're going to get denounced if you say anything. Uh, someone's going to call you a racist. Someone's going to call you a fascist, a sexist, uh, communist, um, uh, Islamo-sympathizer, or something like this. These are all the various names I've been called. And the most interesting one, uh, in that it's now getting some sort of bizarre... Um, sort of veneer of intellectual respectability is that of cultural Marxism. Now, I've attempted throughout the previous uh, uh, number of ep uh, videos that I've made on this phenomenon to try and come to grips with what on earth it all means. I've tried to look into critical theory and uh, the Frankfurt School, and none of it really means anything. But cultural Marxism sounds bad, and it's a wonderful... Um, bit of mud to fling at people, because as we know, mud once flung tends to stick. Um, and it, it, like uh, enemy of the people, it's an unanswerable charge. It's something that you it's almost impossible to defend yourself against because it's so utterly vague. It just essentially, to, as far as I can uh, view the term, cultural Marxism is just plain evil. It's just someone who is out there to subvert our society, to sow as much division as possible just for sheer malevolence. No other reason. Um, and it does point to a vast conspiracy because all these people who are alleged to be cultural Marxists are secretly hiding some sort of hidden agenda uh, that they will then spring on us all once they've uh, done their, their nasty work of, um, of creating so much division and uh, conflict in our society and undermining the values that underpin our society. What I have yet to see is someone who's actually said, I am a cultural Marxist. Um, I, I don't know of anyone in the modern world who is a cultural Marxist, who is ever self-identified as, uh, as such, and I don't see the term cultural Marxism used as anything other than a pejorative, anything other than a denunciatory tool to make somebody look really bad. 
it, again, it's up there with enemy of the people, with uh, counter-revolutionary, with subversive, with un-American, in that it's virtually impossible to defend against. If someone calls you a cultural Marxist, how on earth are you supposed to prove that you're not something? First of all, it's very difficult to prove that you're not something in the first place. But if people are going to call you um, something that is so incredibly vague, but with a vague menace about it, it's even worse. You might as well just um, start calling people heretics and say, let's start piling the bits of wood and tie them to their stake and uh, poof goes the match. I really don't see any difference. Because again, it is it is the sort of thing that, that hints at some dark conspiracy and seems to be, um, at least in some quarters, believed to exist. Um, and it does tend to uh, at least attempt, or at least in some quarters, create an atmosphere of suspicion and um, paranoia. Again, people actually seem to believe in all of this. So, I wonder what it is about that phenomenon, that thing, that vague thing called cultural Marxism. Um, what is it? That's, what, what chord does this strike with people? Is this the only way that people can make uh, sense out of the world? The, people, the, the, the only way that people can make sense out of, out of the fact that they're not terribly comfortable with the world and, and the way that certain other ideologies, uh, political correctness or um, identity politics or whatever, have rubbed them the wrong way. Do they have to create this? Do they have to create this, this philosophy that they can then pin everything else bad on um, in order to make sense out of the universe. It's like, why do we have to have Satan when we have God? Well, because bad things happen in the world, regardless of the fact that God is all-powerful, all all-knowing, and all-beneficent. So the only way we can possibly make any sense out of that is to create Satan. We have to have someone to blame everything on. Now, I don't believe in Satan at all. Um, I, when people ask me if I believe in God or not, I say I don't know whether or not there's a God, and that's the honest answer. But if uh, Satan actually, to me, is a completely nonsensical term, um, but I do see the the need for that sort of thing in a in a belief system that um, splits the world into light and darkness, into uh, into good and bad, into positive and negative. The same thing as um, people who get worked up over issues like political correctness and, uh, and identity politics. Um, they need some sort of foil out there on which to blame everything, and they have to sort of get all these identity politics together, which in the real world are often very mutually uh, uh, um, antagonistic. Um, and they have to lump them all together into a coherent whole in order to put a face on that aspect or those multiple aspects of the modern discourse that they don't like. Cultural Marxism is the perfect um, the, the perfect philosophy for that sort of thing. You can just take anything that you don't like about modern political discourse and call it cultural Marxism and lump it all together with all of that and imply that there is some sort of conspiracy behind it all. And yes, you've made sense out of the, the modern world. Problem is, of course, is that it doesn't make any sense at all, and it, um, unfortunately, doesn't even exist. Thank you.